Hey guys, if you're unfamiliar with our faces, we are the people behind Polycosm and have been graciously invited to cover a topic we actually talk about very often on our channel, and that is combining 2D and 3D in a creative workflow. Today, we'll be creating a sci-fi prop concept in Clip Studio Paint. To be able to help us with the process, we are going to be using Blender's modeling and rigging tools. We are going to cover two different methods to import your model into Clip Studio Paint so you can manipulate it in there in real time and use it as a rough guide for the paint over. Let's get started. Yeah. The concept we are trying to visualize here is a mobile vending machine prop. It is basically a robot that can walk around and sell its items to people. This prop needs to have different stages it can transform into. At this stage, I want to create ideas that can be easily modeled in Blender. When we advance into the later stages, I will start breaking down some of these shapes and start creating more complex areas. I'm sketching mostly using the Lighter Pencil subtool. I really enjoy drawing with this brush, it has a very natural feel to it. I can very subtly sketch out some rough shapes, then build up on them easily. Another subtool I tend to use fairly often is the symmetrical ruler. Especially when I'm working on a hard surface design and I want to get that manufactured symmetry, this tool is incredibly useful. You can set up its orientation however you want. It really speeds up your workflow. If any of your subtools don't seem to be working with the symmetrical ruler, make sure to open your subtool detail palette, click on the correction tab, and check the box next to Enable Snapping. This way, the subtool you are using to draw, paint, or erase with will get affected by the ruler. Once I have a concept that I'm happy with, I'm going to take that aside to a new file and start drawing a turnaround sheet. This will help Christina create a rough model that we can use for reference later on. To make sure the turnaround sheet is accurate, I'll be using the Guide subtool to draw straight horizontal lines. I'm drawing these lines on a new layer on top. Once I have my guidelines drawn, I just delete the ruler and knock back the opacity on this layer a little. The rest is pretty straightforward. I just have to make sure the proportions of the design match and my lines are clear enough. Here, I wanted to do a quick collat drawing to show how the tray coming out of the vending bot will work. To help me with the perspective, I'm using the Perspective Ruler tool to create a vanishing point and some perspective lines. Once again, after I draw enough lines, I just delete the ruler. Here's the final turnaround sheet that I'll be handing over to Christina. Now it's time for me to have some coffee and take a break. Before we start, just make sure that you have the Rigify and Bool tool add-on enabled through Preferences. In the Orthographic views, drag and drop in the references. For further detail on this, check out the second Quick Tips video back on the Polycosm channel. I used simple primitives to block out the model and the tools you're seeing on screen right now. Lastly, I used a boolean on the model by selecting my cutting shape, shift selecting my main shape and hitting Ctrl numpad minus. Time to create a rig! For each leg, I added in a simple bone and extruded bones using the keyboard shortcut E. Now, before I go any further, there are two things I need to explain. When adding in rigs from Blender to Clip Studio Paint, the rig will only be registered if you've used weight paints. To do that, select your mesh, shift select your rig and hit Ctrl P and choose with automatic weights. Choose the armature and head into pose mode where we can move the bones with R to just make sure that everything looks alright. But as you've probably noticed, the entire rig gets affected and is bending weirdly. To fix this, we want to make sure that only the bones corresponding to the 3D mesh is being affected. Select your mesh and in weight paint mode, delete any bones that shouldn't be affected under the vertex groups menu. If the object is red, it means it's 100% affected, and if it's blue, it's 0% affected. To weight paint, choose your weight and paint using the draw brush or using the gradient tool, which I personally prefer. After doing this for all of the bones, this is what we get. Now you might not have a complex mesh like this that needs bones, so let me offer you a simpler alternative. 
for the parts that pop out if you were to only have a linear animation like this animating through the clip studio modeler is a much simpler task in blender leave the parts that you want to move separate and export this entire model as an fbx in the modeler software which you can access through clip studio launcher create the 3d object and under node which is this little tree press the add from file button choose the part you want to move head to movability and hit the plus button the first keyframe will be on by default so just move to the end keyframe 40 and manipulate the model however you want Press the dot to add a keyframe, and if you now scrub between the two keyframes, we have a little animation. We can now rename this animation and just make sure you capture a thumbnail. And under File, Register as New Material, we can actually add this asset to wherever it feels the most suitable. And the beauty is, back in Clip Studio Paint, if we now open the 3D Asset menu, we'll easily find our file and it will always be available in the library. And now if you select the select preset movable parts, we can actually access these animations directly in Clip Studio Paint, which is awesome. Before I begin my draw over, I'm going to bring in a couple of 3D materials from Clip Studio Paint's materials library to fill out our vending bot. This is just as easy as dragging and dropping them in. When you select the 3D material, if you click on this icon on the far right, you can move it around while it's snapping to other geometry around it. If there isn't anything, then it will snap to the floor. Once I'm done restocking our vending bot, I put a new layer on top and fill it with a light grey. I lower the opacity on this layer and on another new layer, I start my sketch. As you can see, I'm breaking down some of the bigger shapes to refine my design. As I'm doing this, I'm constantly asking myself questions like how does this joint move or how does the whole thing unfold and extend? By asking these questions and sketching the answers, I'm fleshing out this design to be believable enough that seeing this move around in a game or a movie won't break immersion. I go over my sketch with a cleaner line art to lock in the design. I'm taking my time here to make sure everything is clear and easy to read. I'm adding details like panel cuts or holes to show the manufactured nature of this prop. Once this drawing is done, I'm bringing in our model with movable shelves, so I can draw a few close-ups to show the functionality. Here, you will notice a difference in the design between the final drawing and the 3D model. This happened due to an accident where the geometry came out wrong at first, but I actually kinda liked the look of it and decided to add that to the final design. If that happens to you too, just remember to add a triangulate modifier to your model in Blender. When I'm done with the first drawing, I move the tray out and start the second one. I'm trying to explain how the glass front opens up and the tray slides out so the customer can pick up their drink. In this next stage, I'm adding some basic color and texture information to help me create a more presentable concept. This will also help ground the design in whatever world we choose to present it in. Realistically, we'd have to create multiple color variations to explore every possibility. But for now, just for the sake of presentation, this one will do. I wanted to add more story and character to this vending bot. I imagine he's been out on the streets doing his own thing for a while, so he probably has some wear and tear on him. People probably keep putting stickers on him and stuff like that as well. To be able to achieve this look, I'll be creating my own stickers with the help of materials from Clip Studio Paint's assets. Clip Studio's materials section is a great resource when it comes to finding pre-made patterns and textures. I wanted to take advantage of this great library, so I found a couple of textures in there. I'm going to drop in one of these textures and then clip mask it to a shape that I filled in. I adjust the scale accordingly, then merge these two files together. Then I add a white outline by selecting my sticker, expanding the selection, and filling that out in a new layer below this one. Then merge those layers as well, and you got a sticker to put on your design. I'll be moving on to coloring the close-up drawings now, and 
I'll be adding one more to show how the clasps open up so the drink can be taken out. To help with the visual explanation, I decided to drop in some arrows. I'm just going to be using this one that I found on the Clip Studio assets. Just download it into your library and it's ready to drop in. And here's the final concept sheet with the cola drawings included. To recap, we started by exploring a variety of concept thumbnails in Clip Studio Paint. I then created a rough base model in Blender, added in a rig and generated automatic weights. This way we were able to import the model into Clip Studio Paint. If you need a more detailed breakdown of this part of the process, there's a more in-depth video on our main channel that you can check out. By using the imported model as a base, I was able to draw the final design from different angles demonstrating how it operates. With the help of Clip Studio Paint tools and materials, bringing this concept to a finish was quite easy. Thanks for watching guys. Hope to see you on our channel. Bye.